ranking 10 different versions of Cinderella's ball gown. Cinderella is perhaps one of the most well-known fairy tales in history, with dozens of books, films, and television shows dedicated to the rags-to-riches story. Cinderella has had a lot of different dresses over the years. Some have been amazing, and others passable. In this video, I'll be taking a look at 10 different versions of the character's ball gown, which is undeniably the most important dress she wears in the film. Before we get started, let me just clarify a few things. I'll be looking at how the ball gown relates to the plot and that version of the character, as well as how it fits in with the aesthetic of the respective film. I'm not going to be looking at any versions of Cinderella in TV shows or black and white films, because honestly, that just wouldn't be fair. I'll be going through the dresses in no particular order, and at the end of the video, I'll rank them. So let's get into it. Ella Enchanted. The 2004 film based on the novel by Gail Carson Levine pokes fun at the original story of Cinderella and the fairy tale genre in general. Ella Afrel, played by Anne Hathaway, is cursed with the gift of obedience, meaning she has to do everything people tell her to do. It makes for a pretty hilarious plot, and the film itself is campy with solid comedic performances from its cast. So it's a pity that it wound up losing money at the box office, effectively ending any chances of other Gail Carson Levine adaptations, which really sucks because The Princess Tales, one of my favorite books as a kid, would make such an amazing anthology series. Unlike other renditions of Cinderella, Ella does not go to the ball willingly. Instead, she is forced to go by the film's villain in order to have her murder Prince Char. She's magicked into the gown in spite of her protests by her fairy godmother, Lucinda. And the dress seems to be closer in line with the fairy's personal style than Ella's. The dress itself consists of a white bodice that laces in the back and a bell-shaped ball gown skirt. While the base of the dress is white, there appears to be an iridescent overlay, which is most likely the result of organza, chiffon, or lame. It's tough to tell, but I'm leaning towards it being a pearlized organza. The bodice also includes some of the same iridescent detailing, but it's tough to spot. Ella wears her hair up and is sporting a colorless jeweled choker and earrings. The fashion in the entire movie is a bit all over the place, with some characters dressed in generic medieval-inspired clothes and others sporting outfits that are completely 2000s. This fits the tone of the film, however, since it's taking traditional fairy tale elements and modernizing it. Ella's ball gown, similar to the outfit Lucinda wears, airs more on the modern side, and with its simple embellishments and color, it honestly looks like something you could buy at Kleinfeld's. I do think Anne Hathaway looks good in the dress, but I actually think she looks even better in the simple blue and white outfit she wears for the majority of the film, which is a bit of a problem since the ball gown is supposed to be the character's most show-stopping dress. I'm perfectly fine with the fact that the dress isn't as eye-catching as Hattie's, Ella's stepsister, considering that character is supposed to be tacky and over-the-top. But I do think Ella's outfit as a whole could have been improved with better styling. Maybe elbow-length gloves and jewels in her hair? Considering the dress is shown in a state of disrepair later in the film, it would have made for a more obvious contrast if there'd been more for the character to remove. All in all, the dress is pretty, but nothing special. Cinderella as I've mentioned multiple times before on this channel, Cinderella's dress in the 1950 Walt Disney film is a silver white color, not the blue many of us associate with the character. Now before people go commenting in disagreement on this fact, please just look at these clips from the film. It's fairly obvious that the dress isn't blue, which you can see in the scene if you compare the color of the dress to the background, the fairy godmother's cloak, or the coachman's hats. The only reason we associate Cinderella with the color blue is because Disney couldn't sell white dresses to little girls without it looking like a wedding gown, and thus change Cinderella's dress to blue for marketing purposes. Which I actually consider a pity since the dress looks far better in its original silver color. Which is why I'll solely be discussing the dress's appearance in the film. Like many of Disney's animated films, Cinderella isn't set in any specific time period or country. That means the costumes of all the characters can be given leeway in regard to historical accuracy. The dress itself is an amalgamation of different trends from different time periods. The silhouette of the skirt is very full, reminiscent of the dress styles of the 1840s, while the excess fabric on the sides of the skirt resemble dresses of the late 1700s. The combination of the puffy arm-bearing sleeves and long gloves seems to be an ode to the evening wear of the late 1800s. Cinderella's black choker could take inspiration from any variety of time periods as it's a trend that has been worn throughout many different eras, as far back as the 1750s to the more recent 1990s. Cinderella's iconic glass slipper looks almost exactly like Snow White's, albeit made of glass, 
Basically, it's your average 1940s era shoe. What I really like about the dress is that it's very similar to what Drizella and Anastasia wear to the ball, but elegant instead of gaudy. It shows that to make her stand out, they didn't have to give her something that was out of place, just something that made her look her best. All of the pieces that make up the ensemble, from how it sparkles to its styling, is gorgeous, and it's not surprising to see how it inadvertently wound up influencing almost every version of Cinderella since. This version of the dress, not the one Disney uses in marketing, happens to be one of my favorite Disney princess dresses. Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella. The 1997 made-for-television film is the second remake of the 1957 musical, and is one of my favorites with 90s icon Brandy playing the title character. With a budget of $12 million, funded in part by Whitney Houston, who also played the film's fairy godmother, the costumes for each character are full of fun and whimsy, especially the stepmothers and stepsisters. Cinderella's ball gown in this film consists of a light blue bodice with an off-shoulder neckline, covered in sequins, and the skirt is made up of layers of a slightly darker blue tulle. She also sports a pair of white gloves and a crown. Honestly, the whole look is pretty similar to the animated Cinderella film. I think the color looks amazing on Brandy, and it evokes a sense of youthfulness that is lacking in some other versions. What's perhaps most impressive about the gown is that every guest at the ball is wearing shades of blue or purple, but Cinderella still manages to stand out, mostly due to her dress being a lighter shade than the rest, but also because the small details manage to make it shine. My one and only qualm with the outfit is unfortunately one of its most important aspects, the shoe. Obviously, it had to be functional, but it's so PVC-y that the magic is lost, especially when characters are holding it. I feel like the director should have realized that the quote-unquote glass slipper didn't translate well to film, and they'd scrapped the idea and given her a sparkly blue or white shoe instead. It would have looked much more magical. Cinderella. This is probably the one you came for. I'm one of many who is absolutely in love with this dress. I've gushed about it before in my video about Belle's live action dress, but now I'll really get into it. Since the film is set in a fictional country with no specific time period, none of the costumes have to be historically accurate. So costume designer Sandy Powell really went for it in terms of drama and character development. Kate Blanchett's character of the evil stepmother has my favorite costumes in the entire film, but the fact that this gown somehow manages to upstage all of them really says something. According to interviews, Cinderella's dress used 217 meters of fabric, with the skirt of the dress being made of multiple layers of lilac, greenish blue, and cornflower blue being used interchangeably. This is why the skirt has so much depth and looks different every time it moves. 10,000 Swarovski crystals were sewn onto the top layer of the dress, which helped it achieve the sparkly quality we saw in the original animated film. The top of the dress is another ode to the original with its puff sleeves, but that's where the list of comparisons end. The color of the dress is not only incredibly different than the original, but the styling is different as well. Gone are Cinderella's glove and choker, which I honestly appreciate since it allows the gown to be the star. I also love the hairstyle change. It's a lot more fun and fits this version of the character better. The dress is the definition of magic, and if I could get my hands on a white version, I would make it my life's mission to wear it down the aisle. I also love the version of the glass slipper. Yes, CGI did a lot of the work and they're not actually wearable, but they sure do look great. There are two things I don't like about this outfit. The first is the butterflies. This is purely a matter of opinion and heavily biased, so don't worry if you like them. I just think that sewing larger crystals onto that part of the dress slash sleeve would have been far more elegant since the butterflies come off just a bit too childish for me. Same for the butterflies on the shoes. They would have looked better without them. The second thing I dislike is that Lily James was tight laced into the dress. She's already a very thin woman and the large skirt would have already helped create the illusion of her waist looking smaller than usual, so corsetting her to 17 inches was wildly unnecessary in my opinion. Yes, it wound up making the dress look all the more amazing, but I doubt we would have noticed the difference if they just used a corset with her natural waist. Ever After 1998's Ever After, starring Drew Barrymore as Danielle de Barbarac, is one of the few Cinderella films where we're given a place and a time period, specifically the Renaissance period in France. There are a variety of historical inaccuracies plot-wise, ranging from the fact that Leonardo da Vinci already would have been dead, the prince in question married someone else, and Utopia was published after Danielle's father was supposed to have died. But whatever. I don't really mind that sort of thing if it makes for an interesting story, which Ever After definitely is. 
leaning into a more realistic take on the tale, there are no fairies or magic wands in this version, and the costumes reflect this, although I believe they're more in line with Italian fashion of the time instead of French. Danielle's ball gown, which is usually referred to as the breathe dress, is actually her deceased mother's wedding dress, and as such has a slightly different silhouette than many of the other characters' dresses. Notice the wide neckline with the off-shoulder sleeve? This version of the ball is actually a masquerade, and as such, Danielle is wearing a pair of wings. Her hair is up, a smart decision considering the wings, and has some non-era appropriate glitter on her face. The shoes the character wears are also her mother's, which explains why they don't fit her and fall off. Finally, a decent explanation other than Cinderella having sweaty feet. Said shoes are a pair of silver mules with a jeweled pattern made of blue gems. The heel of the shoe is made of a clear material, which in the film the Brothers Grimm turn into the glass slipper. My historical shoe knowledge isn't perfect, so correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, this style of shoe wasn't popular until at least the 1660s, decades after this was supposed to have taken place. But considering the average moviegoer wouldn't notice that, I think it's a perfect shoe for the film and for the character. There is not a single thing that I would change about this dress. I think it's perfect in practically every sense. The only problem it may have is that perhaps in comparison to other dresses on this list, it isn't as extravagant. But considering this is supposed to be real life and not a magical universe, it works. The Slipper and the Rose There's a high chance you've never seen this movie. Which is a shame, because it's not half bad. There's some great music, and I'm a sucker for 18th century dresses. Although, these dancing mice are disconcerting. Films from the 70s can be pretty hit or miss when it comes to historical costuming, but this film is pretty well done. Just ignore the cheap wigs and less than ideal fabric choices. In this film, Cinderella's taffeta dress is a very light pink with lots of ruffles and trim. It almost makes her look like a cake, but in the best possible way. She also gets a really beautiful pink fur-lined cloak to wear on her way to the ball. And while the shade of pink is lovely on Gemma Craven, there's just one problem. A lot of other women at the ball are wearing pink as well. And unlike the 1997 version, which did something similar, Cinderella's dress has a hard time competing. This is less of a costuming issue, however, and more of a directorial and blocking problem. Since there's so much dead space in the scene, Similar to the ballroom scene in the Beauty and the Beast live action, your eye naturally drifts away from Cinderella and onto whatever's in the background. And since many of the dresses are not only the same style, but also similar colors, it makes her gown look less special. If they wanted all the guests at the ball to stick to pastel colors, I feel like they should have at least given Cinderella a blue, green, or purple gown. Now let's talk about the glass slippers. My word. They're beautiful and hands down my favorite on this list. They match the lavishness of the time period, and while not actually made of glass, the glitter and gems make it look incredibly magical. So while I do really enjoy this dress, I have to admit that it isn't necessarily a Cinderella gown. You could just as easily see it in a film about Marie Antoinette. Three nuts for Cinderella. This one's for my European subscribers. I had never heard of, let alone seen, this 1973 film. But so many people mentioned that it was their favorite, so I decided to check it out. From a plot standpoint, this film stands out from the others. Instead of following the Disney film's lead, the storyline takes inspiration from the Czech version of Cinderella. So instead of a fairy godmother, Cinderella instead has three wish-granting hazelnuts. Cinderella, played by Czech actress Libusha Sanfrankova, wears a light pink dress along with a pink veil to hide her identity at the ball. From the neck up, I adore this look. I love how the veil pins into the headpiece, I think the shade of pink looks great on the actress, and the hairstyle is lovely. But the actual dress is where I begin to have issues. The Empire Wasted dress has a high neckline, puffed pink sheer sleeves, and a train. Along the bodice of the dress and on the train are paintings of birds, a reference to the doves that have been assisting Cinderella throughout the course of the film. The whole reference feels a bit overdone to me. I wish they'd kept the one on the bodice as it seems intentional and ditched the one on her back as it seems like an afterthought. Because many of the other characters are wearing dark jewel tones like red and blue, Cinderella's pink dress does stand out in that regard. Perhaps if I had the same nostalgia for this film as others do, then perhaps I could appreciate it more, but as it stands, I'm neutral towards it. I do love her wedding dress, though. If there's some significance to the gown that I'm missing, please feel free to share in a comment below. I'd love to learn more. The Glass Slipper 
1955's The Glass Slipper has Leslie Caron in the role of Ella, and the film shows off her ballet talents as often as it can. The film features a wide variety of costumes ranging from adorable tutus to the fabulous 1700s style dresses I adore. There's no magic in this film, and Cinderella is instead gifted the dress. But boy oh boy, is it a dress. Unlike the other dresses at the ball, the sleeves are shorter and sheer, the neckline wider, and the full skirt is more round instead of focused on the sides. She also sports a short pixie haircut as opposed to a wig. So while the color of the pink dress is more subtle than others in the film, because it doesn't fall under the same time period, our eyes are instantly drawn to it. The bunched layers of white tulle pinned on the dress gives it a softer and more feminine appearance in comparison to the satin dresses the rest of the ball goers are wearing. And I love that there's a scene dedicated to her putting on a corset and hoop skirt. The shoe in this film is very reminiscent of the animated Disney version, which makes sense considering they were released in the same decade. All in all, very pretty. A Cinderella Story 2004's A Cinderella Story is the one and only modern day Cinderella adaptation on this list. Sorry, Selena. Starring Hilary Duff as Sam Montgomery, a quote-unquote diner girl, instead of a typical ball, she instead attends a school-sanctioned Halloween dance, which I'm pretty sure is a Hollywood creation because when I was in school, we never had a Halloween dance. Her dress is actually given to her by Regina King's character, Rhonda, who is the equivalent of the fairy godmother in this film. The dress is Rhonda's wedding dress, which is exactly what it looks like. The ball gown features a straight across neckline, a bust made of white lace, a bejeweled waist slash stomach area, and a tulle skirt. I'm sorry, but if I take nostalgia out of the equation, this simply is not a great dress. I can handle the very 2000s jeweled waist, but the combination of tulle and jewels and lace, I simply cannot humor. Instead of the lace bodice, they should have kept it simple, but they wound up having three different fabrics fighting for attention. It's fine when the character has a spotlight on her considering it washes out all the details, but when you see it close up, it's a big ol' mess. I do think that in the context of the film, the dress works. It's not only a sweet moment, but wearing a wedding dress to a Halloween dance would definitely make an impact. Not that that's the first time that's happened on film. Hey, Christina Ritchie. But I think many of us have rose-colored glasses when we think of this dress. Into the Woods, the only non-Cinderella-focused film on this list. The 2014 musical features a variety of different fairy tale characters, with Anna Kendrick playing the role of Cinderella. The outfit features a goldish green corset and skirt, a sheer beige chemise, and gold accessories. Unlike many on this list, the skirt of the dress itself has little structure, which you can see by how easily the character can run around and, more specifically, sit. The layers give it slight volume, but it's easy to see that there isn't any crinoline or hoop skirt hiding under there. I appreciate the idea behind the gold color. It's very different than the typical Cinderella look, and it fits the darker and more materialistic message of the film well. I also like that the dress somewhat resembles her original outfit and silhouette. However, the dress makes little of an impression on me, which makes sense since she's not the main character, but even when compared to some of the gowns the stepsisters or witch wears, I just don't think the dress is all that impressive. Maybe it's because I have a fondness for large skirts, or maybe it's because there's something about that specific color of the dress that just looks inexpensive to me. It must be that exact shade of gold because I adore Grace Kelly's gold dress in To Catch a Thief, but Cinderella's reminds me of an 80s prom dress, at least from the waist down. The rankings. Now that we've gone through all 10 versions of Cinderella's ball gown, let's get into the rankings, starting from the worst and ending with the best. This is going to be heavily biased, so don't take this ranking too seriously. 10. Into the Woods. That dang shapeless skirt and that specific shade of gold kills this gown for me. It had potential, but it fell short. 9. A Cinderella Story I'm sorry, but it's too of its time and has way too many contrasting elements. I want better for Rhonda and for Sam. 8. The Slipper and the Rose Blame the director, but the dress simply did not make an impact in that setting. Which is a pretty big problem considering she's supposed to be the prettiest girl there. The fur-lined cloak and amazing shoes are what kept this dress from a lower ranking. 7. Ella Enchanted I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. If there'd just been a bit more thought in regard to the styling, it'd probably be higher up on this list. 6. Three Nuts for Cinderella Points for originality and the gorgeous pink shade, but the actual dress didn't make much of an impact on me, but I'll also be the first to admit that I don't have much knowledge of the culture in question, so any symbolic meaning of the dress may be lost on me. 5. The Glass Slipper 
I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love a poofy dress. I also think it's a great example of making a character's dress slightly more modern in comparison to others without it making seem like time travel was involved. 4. Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella I'm sorry, Brandy, but it's the clear shoes. The dress itself is great, and I think she looks amazing in it. 3. Cinderella It's iconic as hell, you've got to give it that. Plus, the way it sparkles in the film is really beautiful. Still mad that Disney markets it as blue, though. 2. Ever After This was tough because I have so much love for this dress and movie, but all things considered, it just couldn't beat out my top pick. I would love to see more fairy tales go the more realistic and historic route, at least as an excuse to see more period costumes. 1. Cinderella Are you really surprised? It's by far the best live-action Disney dress, and there's something about it that manages to stick with you long after you've seen it. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below which version of Cinderella's ball gown is your favorite. See you soon. Bye!